1975, and the Labour governments from 64 through to 70, and 74 through to 79. Now, since 1997, New Labour has come in and been re-elected three times. The problem with many of our people is that they can't see what's genuinely in front of them. Everyone with any sense at all realised that there wasn't some magic antidote to the major years. Remember the major years at the end, Tory MPs holding up sort of um, manila envelopes full of, uh, you know, some dubious questions in their mouths, waiting for the envelope to be filled with thousands. It's a very sordid period. The Tories have been here for about 20 years. They were tired. They were dying. They had no new ideas. They were swept away. I remember going to a polling booth on that very Thursday, and you could see the anger in people's faces. They wanted to punish Major and the Tories, and uh, had 180 majority for Labour. Extraordinary. Even in middle class areas, the Tories were swept out in the biggest defeat they've had since 1832. And what comes in? New Labour comes in. And uh, Labour promised a sort of a new deal and a new change, a differentiated version of Wilson's promise of the white heat of technology or in the 60s or the rebuilding of the society under Attlee after 1945. And what has happened since 1997? This country is bankrupted now to several dimensions. The amounts of money that the country owes is astronomical. We are spending enormous amounts of money as if there is no tomorrow in order to prop up capitalist banks, at least half of which went bankrupt about a year and a half to two years ago. It's an extraordinary situation that we are now in, that if Lloyds had collapsed, and if Nat West Royal Bank of Scotland had collapsed, about a fifth to a quarter to a third of the population would have gone to these machines and put the card in the machine, and no money would have come out. And similarly, certain proportion of benefits wouldn't have been paid either. You're talking about recessionary change of a sort that Western societies have not seen since the Great Crash in 1929, 1930. Brown said he had abolished boom and bust, but in actual fact there was a boom and now it's well and truly busted. And he managed to get out of number 11 Downing Street just before it occurred and move over to number 10 to replace Blair, as he always plotted to do, as he always wanted to do. Because Blair was an actor, and a performer, and an artiste, and a sort of mountebank, and a pathological liar. And it took about 10 years for British people to work out what it was like. Blair could argue for a position over there, and then he could go over there and argue with equal sincerity against the position that he'd just enunciated. He was a performer. Somebody who was more like sort of one of these stars of soap operas and so on than a politician. The interesting thing is that the British people trusted him once, and then again, and then to a slightly lesser extent, even again. But the greatest damage that New Labour has done to the society isn't the Iraq War, important though that is, in relation to the Chalcot Inquiry that's going on at the moment. It's not even the economic crash, substantial and devastating though that is for many, particularly as we face the prospect of a double-dip recession. The real damage that they've done to the society is the opening up and then the opening up again, and then the opening up again to mass migration from the second, the third, and the fourth world, which between about 1999 and 2003 4 has changed the nature of the island and its internal demography out of all recognition. Parts of inner London now, parts of inner Birmingham now, Hansworth, 80% non white. <coughs> Parts of the East End of London are literally in the third world. Areas like Dalston, or Greater Hackney, or parts of Stoke Newington, or elements of the Beauvoir Town, or elements of Lambeth, south of the river, parts of Newham, and so on. It's as if virtually we don't exist there anymore. Nearly all of the indigenous people have got out of these areas, have fled out of them. The only people who are left are the people who are too old, or too sick, or too poor, and can't get out. And about four to five years ago, there were lots of Polish, some Ukrainian and other immigrants who come into the European Union, good license, to take cheap jobs during the trashiest part of the credit and debt fuel boom cycle that was then riding high. And Brown said he was the Iron Chancellor who was controlled movements of capital, controlled movements of labour, which is what migration is. You have a system now where our economy and most Western economies is locked into global structures of power and finance, where great walls of money move across the world at the touch of a screen in the city bureaus of London, Leeds, Glasgow, or wherever. 
where jobs move from the south of England to the north of England, to Hungary, to China, to Indonesia, and they're undercut at each level. As lots of people work in and around, or just under to just around, or just over the minimum wage. Any trouble, they're out, and they're replaced by somebody else. And in order to have an economy where you can have a mobile phone at three in the morning, or have a pizza at four in the morning, or have a plasma dish to arrive at your door in a van um, with a man with a cat at five in the morning and play with some plastic, and you pay on the never never, and that this all goes on 24 hours a day, with a bit of a blip on Easter day, a bit of a blip on Christmas day, but otherwise it's full on, full on consumption without production, fueled by debt and based upon credit. And the flip side to all this cheap and easy money, which builds up almost like interconnected pyramid schemes or scams or forms of fraud, if a private individual did them, which is what many of these institutions and banks got themselves into, the flip side of this is the mass movement of people all over the world, swarming after the money, crossing over borders, crossing over continents, getting up into Europe from Africa through the Arab countries in the Libyan desert, and um, Gaddafi's forces throw them back and allow some through and they, some die in the Mediterranean, others are sunk by Italian patrol boats, a certain proportion get in. Mafias in Turkey and elsewhere funnel people in, other people are trying to get out of Albania or out of the old Yugoslavia into the underside of the European Union. Great swathes of people are coming from war zones which have been created by the policies of certain Western leaders in Iraq, in Afghanistan, maybe in the next couple of years in Iran, because major structural changes in world power are coming. It's difficult to predict the future, but I think we're living in a very, very radical age. 100 years ago, 